Hey makers, today's tour is going to be of our bandsaw, one of the most popular power tools that we keep here in the wood shop. This is a red dot tool. That means that this is a tool for our adults in the space to use or for students to use with very close supervision with an adult or teacher standing right next to them. The bandsaw is powered by two rotating wheels inside of these cases that rotate a large saw blade around kind of like bike tires. The wood that we'll be cutting will be pushed directly into the blade here on this stage platform. Now, as I'm setting up the machine, like always, I have the power turned off to the equipment and I can get everything ready to go, check the blade and then turn on the power before I'm ready to do my cut. It's always, always a good idea to get set up for power tool work. So I'm gonna pull my hair back, roll up my sleeves, make sure I don't have any kind of dangling jewelry or anything on, put on my safety glasses and my ears, my ear guards. This is a pretty loud machine, so I like to wear the ear guards at all times while working with it. It just cuts down on the noise. These are almost totally noise canceling. I can still hear what's going on in the room pretty well, but if people are working with the tools on the bench, we'll often advise that everybody in the room pauses what they're doing, puts on the ear guards, and kind of gets dressed for safety to be aware that power tools are being used in the same space where they might be working around our big maker table. So it's time for a close up in how it works to turn on this machine. You'll notice I've turned on the ventilation system in the room, which is a signal to me as the teacher. That the power is now running to all the outlets behind the workbench. It's a really nice safety feature we have built here into the lab. So anytime we don't have the vents on, the power is off to the machines and there's no way that I could turn on a switch and a machine would start running without my notice. A teacher controlled switch turns on the ventilation system and allows us to then power on the machine. So an adult always has to be present in order to get power to the machines in the first place. It's a nice safety system we have set up here in the lab. So once the ventilation is on, I'm gonna reach over and um, open up the vacuum tube that comes up behind this machine. I'll show you real quick. We have a series of vacuums in the lab with these nice little vents that open and close. And so I'm just opening the one that I need to get the most suction, and that's for the one that runs right behind the drill press. Um, and now if I turn on the machine, you're gonna start to see the blade move. In general, I like to keep the distance here as close to the wood that I'm gonna be working with. I'm gonna be lowering down this to be a little closer to the stage because I'm not gonna be working with very thick wood today. Um, and then when my students are working with this space, I advise that they keep their hands outside of these two kind of black guidelines that are on the machine. So every time they're touching the wood, they need to be here or a little bit further out. This machine does require you to push the wood through as you're working. So obviously I, I wouldn't want to be pushing here and get close to the blade. I want to be a little further away. We do have a handy tool that can help us kind of guide material through if we feel like we're getting too close to our hands. A lot of students like to use this. To turn it on, while my safety feature's on, power is on, our students in the shop will say, machine on, which is a signal to everyone that they're about to turn on a machine while others are working by. You can see that started running the blade right here. Close up of turning on the machine again. There we go. And what we're gonna watch for this time is how long it takes for the machine to fully shut off once I turn it off. The user is responsible for standing right in front of this machine until the blade fully stops so that no one accidentally walks up next to them while they're working and while the machine is still running. You can see I turned it off, but that blade is still going. Still going and stop. So that would be the signal for someone working here that they could step away and let the next person come up to do their cut. For our demo today, I'm going to chop up this piece of wood. This came out of the laser cutter. Someone was cutting out some letters. This is a fully usable piece of wood, but it's a little bit of an odd shape. It's hard to store something like this. We'll often cut this down into some smaller pieces and use for scrap 
or more easily kind of managed in the smaller pieces of project. So I'm just going to make a couple cuts randomly to kind of chop up this piece of wood. I'm getting it set up close to the blade but not touching it. And we want the blade to fully come up to speed before we start putting our wood into it. Machine on. I'll lay my hands flat on top. I want to be able to see all fingers and all thumbs while I'm working. I'm going to slowly push it through and you'll hear a loud zing. It's a good thing that I have my ear guards on. You kick it kind of loud in here. There's another one. Fingers and thumbs on top. Push it through, right up there to make that last little cut. Another small piece, easy to manage, easy to store. Then I'm going to cut off this last part here. It's kind of sharp. I don't really want to leave that stored in a bin. Got my third piece. Working on our close-up here, I have a slightly smaller piece. So I'm going to use this push tool to kind of guide it through one side so I don't have to have my hand that close to the blade. I also want to note that because this blade is going to be moving upward, it's going to try to pull my piece a little bit up off the stage as it's cutting. So I want to make sure that I'm sort of holding it down at the same time as pushing it through. It's, you have to do both. You're not going to really press it too hard, but you want to make sure you're holding it in place. Okay, machine on. It's up to speed, so I'm going to go ahead and push it through, trying to sort of hold it down at the same time. And make sure you can see. Look at that awesome cut. Take this over to some sandpaper to work on some of these splinters that pop up on the back. Shut off the machine, and I'm going to wait here until I see the blade fully stop. No one accidentally comes up next to me or in front of me while the machine is possibly still down. As you saw with my other videos, our last step is to do some cleanup. I've got the vacuum running, which did a pretty nice job. Do a little more tidying here. I noticed there's some sawdust on the back. If you're watching for the first time, this is what we call resetting our space in our lab. I don't really like to use the word clean up because that indicates that like you're doing something that might have been, you know, really dirty. Um, but mostly what we're trying to do is return the state of the machines and materials back to where they were when we walked in, if not a little better. And then we're going to try to take care of our space by tidying it up a bit and make it look really nice for the next person who's coming into work here or say coming to walk by and they're just looking around the lab, we obviously want it to look like a clean, make ready space for them too. So I'm cleaning up my mess and I'm also just making sure if there's any other sawdust nearby, I'm just try to grab that too. Hope you enjoyed the bandsaw video. This is one of our most popular tools. We begin running a training on this machine with every fourth and fifth grader that is interested to try and use it. We'll build that into their science class and we'll train any student that is interested to use it during special projects that they might be working on that would require the use of a power saw. It's so nice that we have this machine in here and it can cut through a lot of wood quickly, but it does require some special safety measures. So we just always wanna make sure students are aware of those before we begin working or cutting on a tool like this in the shop.